5.335.3. So what, what we know is this value is one down here because it's what white flange, okay? I know you don't need to put down, but I just remind you, All right? So the shared point C is equal to 1.77 Eight three V Y over I Z Z or one zero six seven over six hundred V Y over I Z Z. Now, does this look familiar? Yes or no? Right. So you see that this number over here, which we analyze from the bottom and you analyze from the top, the answer is the same, okay? So whatever you want, you want to analyze from the top, go ahead, you want to analyze from the bottom, have fun. Your answer will be the same. And this is possible if you understand the concept well. If you don't understand the concept well, that's where the problem will come, right? You'll say, oh, I'm going to take bottom, do I do left and right arrow? Okay, you get really, really confused, okay? So the rules that I said are very critical. So from here, we work out the ratio that we will still have our VY over IZZ is absolutely the same, right? It's equal to 5.623 uh, times 10 to power 6 uh, pounds over inch to power 4. So from here, we can find that the shear, okay, we can find that the shear at point A is equal to 0 0.98 vy over izz so this is equal to 0 0.98 multiplied by 5.623 times 10 to the power of 6 All right so 0 0.98 you tune it's power 3 power 3 thank you not 6 yeah yeah you're yeah, right it's to the 3 thank you So from here, you get a pint. 0 0.98 times by 5.623 power 3 is equal to 5.510 or 5.515. No, 5.11 times 10 to power 3 PSI. And this is also equal to our shear stress at point B. Why? Because the shear stress at point A and the shear stress at point B, the ratio, so this is our ratio 0 0.98 for point B. And then if you go over the other side for point A, did we do this one for point A? No, same side. So, so that's what point B and point, point A is also 0 0.98, okay? As you can see now. Questions so far? Anyone, please? So, I, no questions? No one? It's clear? The explanation is clear, straightforward? Yes or no? So, I just hope it's not before the exam. <laughs> right. So, uh, so this is this this problem as I say it can be really really complex. Why? Because I've combined the what I've combined the box beam and a white flange together in one section. Okay, so that's why it, it looks a, a, a bit com complex. Now, if you look at any of the textbook, this is one of the most difficult problem. No more more difficult than this. Okay, this is the most difficult problem. Now let's look at another example. Okay, and I like this example because this example also mess my mind about a lot. Okay, and and it's not that difficult. Once you know the rules, everything Eugene, is straight. Yes. There's a question in chat. How do you know if you should consider a shell? I will tell you. Okay, I will tell you whether is it a thin wall or thick wall analysis. Okay, I will tell you uh, whether is it thin or thick. Okay. Hey, you Tai Wu, speak to me, man. <laughs> I have not heard your voice before, okay? Right. I don't think a lot of the people in the class have a mic. 
Oh, is that why? Okay, okay. Then I'll I'll start reading. Okay, I'll start reading. I thought uh the 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 computer has a mic automatically. Maybe I'm wrong. If you have a laptop, but if you have a desktop, it doesn't yeah. come with a mic. Yeah, I can see that. All right. The next one, again, one of the most uh difficult problem. Okay, I do all difficult stuff for you guys. Okay. It's example number two. But the problem is you just give us difficult stuff in the exam too. Huh? The problem is you just give us a difficult stuff in the exam too. Come on, you have social media to help you, no? Not really, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Not uh, manipulative numbers, you know. Hey? With the twisting of not with the twisting numbers that you give us. Yeah, but if you look at you look at uh, the internet, you know they will also have you. Okay, you, you are absolutely right. That's why I'm not bothered if you co collaborate. Okay, I'm 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 not uh, bothered at all. Okay, and there's no way I would know, and it's fine. So that's that's where this is really good online, right? But I know I trust you guys. Okay. I don't think you all will want to collaborate, you know. I have a class that is, uh, oh, I, I, pardon my, I have a class last term. I caught student cheating. You want to know how I caught them? Anyone want to know? Anyone, any idea? So it's also online, right? You made up a fake question? No. You know how I caught them? They all got the wrong answer, and it was the same. Yeah, the 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 wrong answer are all the same. The right answer I can't tell. <laughs> okay, the wrong answer I can tell. So I caught eight groups of people. Each group about three to five people. This is not B Tech. Okay, this is in mechanical engineering. But you know what? I let it go. You know why I let it go? It's not just them, it's everyone, okay? So that's the issue with online courses, especially online that your your term test is, uh, is done at home. But what is surprising is my class average for the score, whether take home or at school, is the same. So that's the interesting part. Do you all find it interesting, yes or no? No? <laughs> they told me that they cheat. <laughs> you cheeky, sorry. Right. Okay. Example number two. Okay. This is really, really like, this is really my bobbling. Okay. When I was teaching this course like four years ago, when I look at this, what comes to my mind is holy shit. Okay. What comes to my mind like, oh, here we go again. Okay. And when four years ago, I've not set up the rules yet. Okay. The four rules. Okay. I've not set up the four rules. And, oh, here we go again. Eugene. Okay. Yes. Where would the load be on that question? Yeah, vertical. Yeah, but normally the load's in the middle. Yeah, M the middle vertical. The yeah. middle has a space. Yeah, it's okay. It will transmit. Don't worry about it. Okay? So now, this problem comes when you have a combined... Okay, combine thick and thin wall analysis. Oh, can you see this now? Thick and what? Thin wall analysis. Okay, let's read the problem first. Knowing that a given vertical shear V causes a maximum shearing stress of 75 megapascal in an extrusion beam, okay, having the cross section shown. Determine the shearing stress at the point, at the three point indicated, okay? So we know from this problem, you have a vertical shear coming down, okay? So the vertical shear is coming down down here. So you have a vertical shear down here. Oh, wrong color. Why do I use that? You have a vertical shear coming down. Okay. 
So this is your V. Okay, you have a vertical shear coming down now. So this is your V, right? So the V now, once the load is put over here, I know what you mean, okay? One of you just say there's a gap, okay? You can have a piece of plank on top and then you apply the shear force V on top. Does not matter. Or if I draw the arrow big enough, right? You get what I mean? It will transmit to the left and it transmit to the what? To the right. Okay, so I'm just for simplicity, I'm going to just draw that as a V. So what is given is where we have our tau max, same problem. Right, our tau max is equal to 75 times 10 to the power 6, right? So we only know that, and we are told that we want to find the stresses at the three points. So we have what? Stress at A, B, and C. So we want to find the stress at A, stress at B, and stress at C. Okay. So which one is maximum? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. So I'm going to take this, copy, and we are going to draw the shear flow. Right? So the shear flow goes from here Now, after that, I stopped doing drawing shear flow already. I stopped. Okay, but I know that this will come this way. Because in thick wall analysis, you don't need to really draw shear flow. Okay, so now my concern is this. Okay, where my line is drawn, I'm going to use a different color line. Right? Above here, this is thin wall analysis. And below here, this is thick wall analysis. Yes or no? And then I did not draw any further because the analysis, the datum is at the centroid. So this, they have just drawn. This is our centroid, okay? I don't, I don't need to draw the bottom part because the analysis cannot cross. Yes or no, right? Rule number what? Rule number four. Right. So now, by looking at this beam, for the thin wall analysis, is it a white flange or box beam? Anyone? Both. Anyone? Huh? It's both? No. How can it be both? Is it a box? Is it a box beam or white flange? White flange. Yeah, it's white flange because the arrows have two different start point. So start point number one. Start point number two. So for point C and point B, it is what? Thin wall analysis. Point A is thick wall analysis. Right? I repeat again. Point B and point C are thin wall analysis. Point A is thick wall analysis. The only thing that's different between thick wall and thin wall, besides having the Q, is how you take your what? Thickness. So we know that our shear force is coming down this way. Okay, so this is our V. Right. So let's let's look at now before we go anywhere, again, 
this problem set? Anyone want to guess? Is it point A has the maximum shearing stress? Or is it point B? Or is it point C? Anyone? 